Hi, my name is Sarah Jerram and you're watching Artistic Digs. This series shines a spotlight on musical contemporaries who inspire me to talk with them and learn more about their creative space. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank uh, you. Our special guest today is none other than my good friend, Rebecca Hennessy. Thanks so much for being here, Rebecca. Thanks for having me, Sarah. Yay! <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to do just a little uh, introduction. Rebecca is a trumpeter, singer, composer, and band leader. In November 2020, she released her debut album as a singer-songwriter called All the Little Things You Do. She has released eight other albums to date as band leader or co-band leader with Fog Brass Band, Hobson's Choice, Sweet Pea, and Way North. She is also the band leader for Massey Hall's Women's Blues Review. In 2018, she won the Toronto Arts Foundation Emerging Jazz Artist Award and was nominated for Montreal Jazz Festival Grand Prix de Jazz in 2016. Currently, Rebecca is working on a new album that she and her partner, Michael Herring, have recorded at their home studio, featuring Kevin Bright, Dave Clark, and Tim Shaw. That is it, yeah. All right, so <laughs> here we are. Nice to see you. So good to see you, Sarah. Thanks for having me. This is Thanks. exciting that we're, uh, we get, we're able to talk like this. I know, right? It's the future. <laughs> it is the future. It is... Um... Well, you know, that's the thing. Like, we have this. That's the main thing. So, like, you know, uh, how have you been doing throughout all the all the lockdown? You've, you have a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks for asking. I've been really good. Um, have a new baby. Her name is Nancy. And uh, she's now four months old on Monday. Um, so i got to figure out what she's going to wear for her photo shoot. <laughs> <laughs> we do a little photo shoot on the the month um the month birthdays um because it's it's for us you know it's like we can look back in the photos and um yeah the pandemic has been challenging of course and but but um michael and i had well nancy was gestating she was growing inside of me for the whole pandemic since it started basically um uh, but we did decide to have a baby before the pandemic started. So it wasn't like the inspiration uh, of the pandemic to be like, well, let's have a baby. There's nothing else to do. It wasn't like that. And no no judgment on other people who might maybe have been inspired by the pandemic. But yep. um, um, we were, you know, ready to have a family. And then uh, and then I was pregnant. And then we were like, oh, no, this is a terrible time. There's a pandemic and it's really scary. But then it turns out to be a really great focus point for our lives and um and we love Nancy and we've also been creating a lot of music during this time and um you know doing live shows on uh, Facebook a jazz in Toronto Facebook uh, page uh once a month and um what else has been going on I mean time goes by so quickly and so slowly at this exact same time it's so strange I mean how have you how have you been yeah, uh, I agree on all of that. And I want to hear more about all the stuff that you just talked about. But um, I've been good. I have also been, you know, uh, writing a lot, which, hmm. you know, like I was in the middle of a huge writing project when this, um, when lockdown happened. And it was just like this, like, okay, now I have more time. Extension, um, silver lining. But uh, yeah, teaching online. Did my first live stream show last night with yeah. Rob, so and that was so great. Uh, yeah. Oh, thanks. So it was yours. I uh, yeah <laughs> yeah. It's been nice to support each other and like uh, yeah, jazz in Toronto is so awesome. It really does feel like we're hanging out. Like it's really cool. Um, I mean, you know, you even gave me a shout out when I like loved. Uh, I said a few things on the like the little chat, and you were like, "Hey, Rebecca," and I really felt like. We were hanging out. It was really nice. Oh, yay. Oh, that's nice. Good. <laughs> well, it did feel that way. Because, you know, like, it is very strange. That's that sudden silence at the end of the tune. And you're like, hello? <laughs> so it's nice to see the chat. <laughs> like, you know, is this thing on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a mute. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes let's hear more about that I think I saw something on Instagram about you getting a new practice mute for like 
Yeah. Yeah, this is this is the old one. Uh, very good as well. It's quieter, but the new one is Ewan Divot's new, um, he made a new practice mutes that are really, really great. So check out Ewan Divot. Yay. Okay, cool, cool. Um, let's go back to talking about the music that you've been creating during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Is there anything specific you want to know about it? Uh, yeah. Any all? Any any all. I mean, some some stuff in the works. Yeah. So there's, um, I guess, right before Nancy was born, Michael and I tracked seven seven tunes um, uh, that we had been writing throughout the pandemic. Um, and some of them I actually wrote before the pandemic started, but like they're all recent tunes. They're new, all new. And um, and some of them are co-written with Michael and I, and I co-wrote one of them with my friend Julia Hamilton, who I co-lead a band called Sweet Pea um, with. And um, is it just Michael and I's songs and Julia and some that I just wrote? Um, so yeah, we decided. Okay, we I got um one of those COVID grants to make a digital recording. Sweet. Um, and so that grant is covering some of the art- art- artist fees. So I, I hired a Kevin Bright, who's also on all the little things you do to track his parts from home after Michael and I did some bed tracks. Um, and he sent some crazy, awesome guitar parts. And um, yeah, right before Nancy was born and I got Tim Shaw to record some drums and Dave Clark to record some drums and everyone sent their parts. And um and then I sent it all to my producer, mixer, engineer, um, David Traversmith. And he, he's so amazing. He sent back some of the mixes that are like in the works. And um, this home recording project is turning out to sound as good as the, all the little things you do record, mm-hmm. like the way the production of it all. Yeah, it sounds really high quality. I'm really excited and proud of what's happening. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. And all the little things you do, by the way, sounds fantastic. Like, I'd say, actually, let me just rave for a second about that album, because honestly, uh, it came out just around my birthday, and uh, coincidentally, Nancy's birthday. Yes, indeed. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, and, like, I just remember listening to it, like, um, sorry, we're sidetracking a little bit here, but just have to rave. Um, Driving to Queenston Park, actually we just like wandered around it was this beautiful sunny day the day that nancy was born and uh and we were listening to it, uh, your album on the highway and, and it's just like all the autumn colors were out and oh my gosh the sound is amazing the songwriting is amazing the performances are amazing yeah your singing is is phenomenal it's so I, it's like one of my favorite records honestly like oh thanks sarah yeah, wow. yeah, yeah sorry i have to gush <laughs> that. that feels so nice thank you thank you sorry yeah i'm really happy about this album all the little things you do yeah and uh yeah david Trevor smith is so awesome to work with and jeremy darby also tracked i tracked uh, most of the the um bed tracks at um canterbury music nice. in toronto and uh and then took those tracks to david and he he's put some oh, we put overdubs and and uh he mixed and mastered it all and added some stuff himself yeah 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 amazing so the new album is going to be like wow same sort of sonic quality it's going to be amazing yeah there's uh, unfortunately because of the pandemic um couldn't track piano like a uh, tanny gill isn't on it unfortunately um and dave's on some tracks but not all of them um, but it's most mainly um, Michael Herring, Kevin Bright, and myself. And uh, yeah, uh, it's really cool. Wow. Wow. I can't wait to hear it. Yay. <laughs> Yay for new music. Let's see. What have you been, if you had time to, to be like listening to new music, what have you been? Sort yeah. Of- I mean, there's tons of time in the house to listen to music. Michael and I are constantly putting on um new and old stuff that we've been you know that we're um thinking about we're getting input from people online you know a lot of our friends online are posting what they're listening to so because we have all this time at home we're like keeping track of what to play and um and now that we're you and I are talking about it right now I want to make sure that I can tell you what I've been listening to I'm gonna look (laughs) um I I checked out um uh 
Well, I've been learning Hot House, actually. Oh, uh, Dizzy Gillespie from the album Groove and High. Um, that's a really tricky melody to play, but I'm, I'm going to um, learn that. And I was checking out, today we're listening to Milestones by Miles Davis. Yeah. And uh, what else? A lot of Paul Simon and a lot of Joni Mitchell. Um, like, And uh, there's this new thing that was released. Sorry, I'm looking at my phone. There's this new thing that was released. Um, it's a Joni Mitchell, like, live at live somewhere where is it I, I can't remember uh mom brain but there's like like a ton of tracks from her like when she was really young playing at this place in the states i think and it's um she plays all these like old folk songs wow on wow. spotify so that's so cool i'm gonna have so to be checking that out and uh bernice lone swan her new single or is it an album uh, I think there's a single released called Lone's One. Uh, Bernice, yeah. Wow, cool, cool, cool. Ah, nice. I actually, yes, I've been meaning to check out the new Bernice as well. I've seen some buzz. Let's talk about your songwriting influences. I mean, like you were kind of touching on some of that as you were lis listing your listening um, uh, activities. Who are your influences? Who are your teachers? I mean, what's the... Yeah. what's the difference yeah. for songwriting um huh it's a hard one because i i guess with um i mentioned already like paul simon and like Joni mitchell like songs with lyrics um i've also been inspired by the bands that i write with like when hobson's choice when we, we were doing a lot of playing and writing and recording together i was always being inspired by my my um, musician friends, um, people that I'm in bands with, like Harley Card and like Felicity Williams and Michael Davidson, like those were some of my like, and then they would bring in their stuff that they liked, like Bruce Coburn and like, again, Jody Mitchell and, um, oh my God, like just inspired by my colleagues a lot of the time. Um, but specifically, I guess lately, I've really been inspired by, um, um, Mavis Staples, and I've been checking out Dinah Washington a bit, um, and Kate Bush. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's so many, you know, there's so many. I th Those are some that come to mind. Yeah. Those are, those very, are nice. very cool. Yeah. Oh, man. Have you checked out uh, Theo Blackman's Kate Bush album? No. Hello, Earth. Okay. I will uh, definitely check that out. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, all the good things in one package. <laughs> and uh, that's so that's so cool. I was listening to, um, speaking of Hobson's Choice, I went down a Rebecca Hennessy rabbit hole today. Oh, nice. <laughs> I see you got my, some of my records behind you there. That's so yeah, sweet. Yes, did you notice? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, nice little um, backdrop. That's so sweet. Thank you. Yes. Well, you know, um, I, I went back because I'm a huge Hobson's Choice fan as well. Aww. Thank you. Listening, yeah. Listening to Of the Waves and uh, holy smokes. It's just like time it's timeless to me. Like this the songwriting, the artistry, everything is so it's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful album. Um yeah. And then listening to two calls from the fog brass band, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Thanks. I would love to talk about instrumental writing mm -hmm. and songwriting and the lack of division or you know like the choices that we make with those processes yeah well that's a really good like um kind of open-ended question because there's so much to dive into but um if I sort of just think about it on a surface level in terms of like how I might approach uh, instrumental writing versus lyric writing and like song, like songwriting songs with lyrics. Um, I think they come from the same space in, for me, often I'm writing at the piano and I'll come up with, um, um, harmony and melody almost at the same time in a way, like I can't not hear, um, melody without harmony and vice versa. Like, 
and they kind of come together and sometimes I'll be writing like um, a melody line and a bass line at the same time and then I'll fill in the rest depend like kind of willy-nilly uh, as it comes to me um it's an unfolding thing that happens um yeah so but I guess lyrics can come later so maybe maybe what I'm doing is actually it can also come first so all of these I know it's a little bit jumbled here but they can all come at different times and it's really fun when like when they all come together because it feels like there's something happening that I that is, I'm just a vessel. I know that sounds a little bit cliche, but it can feel like inspired and and um, there can be some, I'm just sort of spitting it out. And it very rarely happens like that, but in the moments that it does, I feel so um, un tingly and excited and like there's something happening here and I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. don't know if you've experienced that. Uh, yeah, I mean, those are like the good moments and they're the ones yeah. that- <laughs> And then there's like thousands of just like banging your head against the wall. Like, what is this that I'm trying to do? And then maybe at the end, you're like, yeah, it's cool. And then the musicians that you play, you play it with, make it feel delicious or, you know, complete or whatever. Totally. Totally. I know. Right. But those are the moments like that's, that's the pot of gold, you know? Ah. Wow. That's so cool. Yeah. And I agree with you. Like it comes in bits and pieces sometimes for me as well. And like, it's like, there's a puzzle kind of. Totally. Yeah. You're just trying to get the edges, like melody and bass, and fill in the middle. I, I like that analogy. <laughs> it's really great. And puzzle. I've not heard that analogy before. That's cool. Nice. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, and sometimes here's my piano right here. I'm just going to show you. I'm going to pretend like I'm writing. This is just a fun, fun thing. Ooh, okay, here we go. Nice. I'm just going to be like, oh, I like that sound. I'm like not looking, and I'm not very good at not looking in the piano. I can find things that I like just by spreading my hands apart. And then like, I could be like, Oh, I like that sound. And I can take that sound and make, uh, I think a lot in color and shapes and then go from there. Beauty. Wow. Um, like Dave Clark has sent me lyrics and some of these, some of the tracks from all the little things you do are written by Dave Clark and I, because he sent me lyrics and I wrote melody to them. And actually, I think you probably, I don't know if you experienced this, but like writing um, music with poetry, it can actually alleviate some of the workload of write, songwriting because you can almost see that there could be a melody based on what words you see. Like, I, I don't know, for me, it, the words can really inform melody line and, uh, and harmony even too. Absolutely. 100%. I mean, like, have you ever, um, I don't know, I forget where I saw this or where I learned this, but Cole Porter, when he would write, you know, um, he would use text first. So, um, it was just one of those things and he would just repeat the words. It was just one of those things. It was just one of those things. It was just one of those things. And, and eventually that would start to become pitch, you know, like you can hear oh. the inflection, right? Cool. It was just one of those things. It was, so anyway, um, <laughs> that's kind of uh, like one way that, I don't know, sometimes text can help, but then in other ways, it goes in a completely opposite direction and you can, as you know, the sky's the limit. So it's true. It's really exciting. I hope what I said made, made sense, but I, I hope think what I said makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It does. Uh, we're making sense. High five. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cool. Like, um, on two calls, um, what, what was your sort of, okay. I want to talk about two calls and I want to talk about like when you started to write lyrics, when did you start to write lyrics? First of all, what, mm. what, Part of what stage of your career was that? With Hobson's Choice, I started to write lyrics for, yeah, I had, um, I had only written a few songs when Hobson's Choice formed. And it was like, you know, I felt like everyone was bringing in beautiful songs that were really, um, I was really moved by. And I was like, oh, I'm really excited. I want to write some lyrics too. Uh, lyric based songs and so I did write some some songs initially 
um, for Hobson's Choice, and that was sort of the beginning of my songwriting. But I did take a pause for a while. Like I didn't write very many songs with lyrics for a few years. Mm. Um, and then songwriting started to become songwriting, as in songs with lyrics, started to become more of a thing I started to do. Um, when was that? With Sweet Pea, with Julia Hamilton in 2013. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. But I, I wrote songs before then too, but we really started to get rolling there. And then um, and then by the time, maybe by 2015, 16, um, I started to write a lot more, more of my own songs for my monthly gig at the Transact with Makeshift Island. And uh, things started to really get rolling. By 2017, I had a, almost a record's worth of uh, songs that I liked that I had lyric, writ, written lyrics uh, for. Um, and then we started, yeah, I started recording with, uh, with my band that is now called Rebecca Hennessy. It's like, that's the, all the little things you do band. Uh, that's makeshift Island with Kevin Bright, basically on guitar. So wow. yeah. Wow. yeah, it's You're... been a, a slow, a slow burn. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. It takes so long to percolate and doing gigs all the time and developing your repertoire through, through gigs I mean like, that's it. That's. Having a gig is so important. Having a gig. Yeah. So let's get back to that ASAP, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, Oh, but I want to add something. Oh, I yeah. just realized, um, you know, two calls the, the way, um, there was some, some melodies that are really inspired on two calls that are inspired by nature. Um, particularly the song two calls, uh, was written, um, inspired by a recording that I made when Michael and I were in Panama. We were doing the Panama Jazz Festival in 2016, maybe, I think. Wait, was it then? 15, I think so, yeah. And uh, we were in Panama jungle hiking one day and uh, I heard these two bird calls and they were kind of, it, they were kind of um, overlapping and I took out my phone and recorded them and, and then listened to them when I got home and I, um, I transcribed the bird calls and became inspired to write a song called Two Calls. So they're two calls. They're actually two bird calls. Yeah, that's beautiful. You can hear one, that. One of the song. One of the one of the melodies is. Uh, and the other one, the other bird call is like. So together, that's they kind of they're competing in the song in a way or complementing each other. Oh, beautiful. Did you ever find out what, what kind of birds they were? Nope. Nope. Kind of nice to have that mystery. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder though, like there's a, the Cornell or Ornithology website has a whole bunch of, yeah, you know. <laughs> so good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> I'm obsessed with birds. Oh, me too. Yay. Nice. <laughs> Do you know how to identify some birds? Uh, getting there. Um, uh, let's see if I can whistle you on. Hold on. Uh, now I'm, I have the two calls birds uh, in my head. I want to, I want to, I'm going to, it'll come to me and then I'll just drop it in. It'll be weird. <laughs> Please. <laughs> also though, that sounded like the black winged chickadee a little bit. Oh yeah? Yeah. Like it's just that. Oh. Do you know that one? Oh my gosh, which one is that? It is a chickadee of some kind, right? It's no? a sparrow. Is that really just it's a, a sparrow? white-throated sparrow. Oh, sweet Canada, Canada. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, cool. Uh, Is that a starling? It's a red cardinal. Oh. But I'm such a nerd because I really like learning the bird calls. <laughs> You're really good at doing them too. Holy That's because I'm always like trying to get them to uh, to call back. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Do you ever get that? Do you get like in conversation? No, I don't think so. No. It's a dream, isn't it? It would be amazing. Yeah. 
I wonder too, like, uh, I've been hearing a lot of birds in the, in the neighborhood recently. And I've been thinking about like how there's a, a parting of birds in the fall. And then there's greetings probably of migratory birds coming back into our area and little conversation. This is my imagination, little conversations of greeting happening around this time or, or other things, <laughs> probably more. Yes. Than- <laughs> <laughs> like- anyway um birds yay so okay do you have anything coming up any live stream shows um anything you want to yeah i'm gonna again look at my phone because um again mom brain on the um the march yeah march 27th we're doing the um the online show with jazz in toronto facebook page right and um it's with Michael and I um, at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Nice. Pacific yeah. Standard We're Pacific? Time? Or East, Eastern? Wait, are we Eastern? Wait, oh my goodness. I usually write P- I do that for my um, BC family. I'll say Pacific Standard Time. Thank you. Yeah, uh, okay. Eastern. 5 p.m. EST, yeah. March 27th on Jazz in Toronto. That's so cool. Yeah, and that would be a Saturday night at 5. Yeah. Wow. I love how you play so many instruments on these live streams. Like you're, you're on the accordion, you're playing your trumpet, you're singing, you're playing piano. It's, it's wow. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I started playing the accordion. Um, Cause I bought my first accordion at your wedding. I remember that. <laughs> In 2013, right? 11. 11? Yeah. Why, why did I think 13? Anyways, uh, 11 and uh, in Jordan. Yes. There was a little flea market and I paid 130 bucks for my first accordion with gold keys. Wow. Is that still around? No, I traded it in for a, um, a lighter um, accordion that has the musette sound. Beautiful. But I wish I still had it actually. Oh yeah? Yeah. Okay. Because it wasn't that much of like, it wasn't a huge investment. It was like, I tra- I, put it towards my new accordion but I kind of now because I'm actually uh, I play accordion a lot I I deserve that accordion too like I thought I wasn't sure how much I would do but I just kept going with it so right I think it's just one of those things you just regret selling that one piece of gear I don't know maybe it'll come back to you who knows <laughs> maybe <laughs> these things happen but yeah I um there's yeah that's the next show um and this new album that I'm pretty sure we're going to call it Joy Will Find Us. Um, that's what we're going to call it. Um, and I say we because Michael and I recorded it. And he he's a co-writer on the album as well. But it's going to be released under my name. And um, yeah, Joy Will Find Us. I'm really excited about it. And yeah. Mm, I'm so excited too. Is there a website that uh, people could stay tuned to? to- my website, RebeccaHennessy.com. Yay, cool. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Just a little side question. Uh, on your January live stream, there were a couple of new songs that you debuted. I think it was debut. One was called. Oh, the- there's some new ones on there that we would have, uh, that are definitely newish that are on the record. Nice. Yeah. I remember the Dandelions was really, really. That's it. It's yeah. Thank you. Yay. I can't <laughs> wait to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I think uh, we first met at U of T, mm-hmm. right? In 2000 and, well, I got to U of T in 2003. Yeah. 2003. Wait, 2002, 2003? 2003. And I graduated in 2006. When did you graduate? I graduated in 2005. So I think that's that sounds right to me. I think yeah. I when I was in third year. And we were, we were like, we kind of hit it off pretty quick. And I just remember always laughing uh, I was having a great time and we still do I mean and then you had me on your album and I think it was one of my first like first ask somebody asked me to be on the record and I just remember feeling so excited and thrilled that somebody 
like yourself would ask me and I was just like honored and it was such a fun day we had such a good time and we were so silly after and I don't know we always bring it up but I just I loved our car ride home we were so <laughs> out of it it was so funny <laughs> you were really loopy there was some good uh yeah some good inside jokes <laughs> that day and I also found recently these pictures from the recording session and there's like a picture of of us recording Dusty Nugget uh oh so Allison and Joel and and we're obviously like totally like playing it up like acting you know professional pro- very, very professional, professional. We were having a good time letting off some steam. It was so good. Yes, exactly. So I'm really glad that we uh, ended up um, meeting at U of T and main- like maintaining our friendship and playing gigs together. And yeah, yeah, mostly I just, I really cherish our friendship. So thanks for having me on your, on your show. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm really excited also to hear your new record. Oh, thank you. Free magic. Like- Woo-hoo. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I feel like you've really like been an inspiration to me like throughout, you know, all our careers and yeah, our friendship. I very much value as well. Like it's been, it's been almost 20 years, hey? What? <laughs> no, not 20. No, not 20. <laughs> 15? Great. I don't know. Yeah. A lot it's been a while it's been and a while. it's been it's been good it's been great <laughs> <laughs> 20 years no really how long have I been in Toronto it's coming up on oh my god Sarah that freaks me out no I love it <laughs> <laughs> I know I look horrified but I just time is weird the time is weird I know but it's good to mark these things just be like oh here we are yes yeah. almost almost 20 years later ish but um yeah well thanks so much for joining me today it was really really great to have you on and uh to see you virtually you too sarah it's so lovely to see you and thanks for interviewing me yeah my pleasure
Gotta keep the light bright. Thank you.